Let's do a video that kind of compresses a lot of what Christoph presents in his 13 video series to just the bare bones of what you need to get started. Now, you may need to go back and optimize things, but I'll present kind of just a simple explanation on how to get started. And many, many times what I'm showing you is all you need to do to get rather good results without going in and tweaking things. All right, so let's bring up our LoRa synth, and you'll notice when it comes up, a default sound file has already been loaded that you can play around with, so you don't need to actually load one of your files in to experiment initially. Now, if you want to create your own analysis the way we're doing here, you need to buy the paid version of the LoRa synth. A free version will be available that'll let you load analyses that you've already created, but to create ones of your own from your own custom sample or sound files you need to get the paid version so what we'll do is we'll load one of our own files in instead we'll click the load new file and we'll navigate to where we have some files so i'll load up a vocal file that i have already created it's a wav file but this supports a lot of different audio formats i can play that file And when you notice I play it, it'll play at the default level that is set to 0 dB when you load the tool. This can be a little hot once you normalize things, so you can always change this, make it a little lower. This will stay at that level if you bring in new files, but if you reload LoRa, so it'll go back to 0 dB. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is highlight my section that's going to be played. It might be a little low, so I'll normalize it that uses the max MSP 0.9 dB normalization. And now I want to crop out just the part of it that I want to use. And I want to try and, at the beginning, not leave any silence. At the end, not leave too much silence. Because if I'm looping this or pressing my fingerboard to start indexing it, I don't want silence to start the playback. And I don't want silence in a loop. Now you can adjust this in the overlays by adjusting indices, but I like to make my initial sample conversion as close to what I want to be played as possible. So let's go and we'll normalize. And now we, if you want, you can click the zoom button if it's a long sample and you can zoom back and forth, but I'll crop this. And now that gives me the normalized sample that I'm gonna convert. I can play it. And now the next step we want after we've cropped and normalized our sample, maybe the normalized version will be a little too hot for you. You can't really adjust the level that you're normalizing to here. If you need something intermediate between what you had originally in terms of level and the normalized level, go back, recreate your sample at a higher level and read it back in. But right now we want to analyze for partials. And there are seven different configurations that Christoph has provided that I suggest you use as opposed to trying to deal with resolution with frequency and noise parameters. Those uh, we described in the manual that should be coming out soon. But for this simple case, don't worry about them. Click one of the seven options here, listen to it. <laughs> now that one's all garbled up. That one's no good for what we're doing here. Let's try voices. Find one that you think sounds good to you and use that to begin. Now, for the parameters that are set here, when the analysis was done, it found 27,309 partials. We have to get that down to as close to 64 as possible because the output is going to be 64 partials. Now, one thing you can do is look at your fundamental frequencies. Sometimes you'll see a frequency in there that's really out of whack. You can get rid of that by changing your minimum and your maximum frequencies. The min and max frequency content in terms of this for the fundamental evolution across the preset you'll see here is not that big. But a lot of times you'll see a flat line here. If you're reading in a sample that's a particular note at a particular frequency and the harmonic content of that is not too complex you might just see a flat line here in terms of your fundamental evolution 
But here, the fundamental kind of changes over across the sound file. I don't really need to change this that much. If I wanted to, I might change the step size. If this is really steppy, I can go in here and change the step size, make that a little lower, change it, re-estimate. You'll see now things are a little less steppy. Changing step size to be lower doesn't mean you're going to get better output in terms of sound. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. You can also force fundamentals, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about that for the simple kind of cases we're talking about here. Let's go back. We'll play it again. Okay, and now the most important thing we're going to do is if this had been a sample that had been really, really noisy or the harmonics in it were really, really complex, we might want to just extract raw partials right now, and that will allow you to just load them up and go about your business. But for most pitch sounds or most sounds that you want to apply format processing on, you're going to want to channel up. Channel wise is using one of these things in step four, and that's going to be pretty much channelization and simplify in different orders. Your goal is to try and get this down to 64 partials or as close to that as possible, and also still sound good. Always use your ear all the way through whatever you're doing in the lowest tool because what actually is going to come out is going to be more based on what you like the sound of than making it 64 partials versus maybe 70 partials or 58 partials. So let's just try channelizing this, see what happens. Channelizing reduces partials in a number of ways. Simplify reduces partial in a number of ways. There's a remove residue function that removes partials, and you can change frequencies that will either add or remove partials when you do your simplify operations. This got down to 93. So that's more than I really want. I want to get down to close to 64. So let's see what simplify does. That gets down to 53. That's a little low, but I still might be able to create a channelization with 53 partials. Now, one of the things is, if I get down to more than 64 partials and I extract, it's going to extract the 64 partials. If I go down to less than 64 partials and extract, it's going to extract to that number of partials. So normally, it's a little better to get the best sonic resolution to be a little over than a little under, but the end result really is what your ear thinks is okay. Let's go and try the opposite way. We'll reanalyze. And when you analyze, it plays it for you. You see your waveform, you see your spectral content, and when you hit analyze, it will replay whatever the last one of your predefined settings you had were. Now, if you wanted to, you could fiddle around with the parameters for the analyze and hit analyze. But again, that's kind of an advanced function. And for the most case, I don't think you really need to use it until you really get finely attuned to using the tool. All right, so let's try again. Now let's do simplify first. That reduced it down to 2,866 partials. Now let's channelize. All right, that's worse. That combination took me way lower than I wanted to go. Uh, another thing you can try, let's go back, reanalyze. You can try channelizing and removing residue. So let's do that. It'll channelize, then it'll run this remove residue algorithm. Let's see what happens. 45, that's still a little low. Okay, so what can I do maybe to get closer to the 64 I want? Let's go back. We'll reanalyze. I kind of reset things. We'll take remove residue out. Let's channelize. And now let's bump up the max frequency content because that will add more partials as I do my analysis. And let's see what happens if I simplify now. There you go. We're at 60. We're much closer to where we want to be. Let's try one more time. You have to go back and reanalyze if you want to redo your uh, reduction algorithms. So let's bump that up a little more. Say 13, 5. We'll do the same thing. 
We'll channel eyes. We'll simplify. 61. You know what? If your ear thinks it's okay, that's close enough to where you want it. Let's go and extract. When you do your extraction, you'll see that the partial map uh, that's been created, there's not too much red or yellow in the uh, higher partials. So this gave me a pretty good noiseless extraction. Now what I can do, I can test it. And here I can play around with a few things in terms of tuning and noise levels and reformatting things. But for the most part, as a simple case, just go right now. If you think you like the sound of it and you don't see that it's too noisy, save it to a file. All right. Now, very important. This number here is going to be the analysis slot in the Egan matrix that your analysis will be written to. When I save to a file, let me save it, and I'll give it a name. And what I'll do is I'll save it to my analysis files. So I'll save this as, say, chant or using formant. It could be any name you like. And I'll, okay, so I'll save this. What that will do is create a file, chant for form, that's the name I gave it, and then it's going to append analysis1.mid. Analysis files are the special .mid files that are used to load into the DSP, just like we have special preset.mid files that load preset configurations. Analysis1 is very important. That's telling me this is going to be loaded in the first analysis slot. Don't remove that number there, or you won't know later on if you reload this what slot it's going to go to, and you could overwrite some slot that you already use. All right, so we can do two things. Number one, we want to set the device we're going to load to. If it's visible and available, a blue solid dot will occur there. Now, if you're on Windows and something is already using your Continuum or Micro or you can make this module or Continuum Mini device that you're writing to, this will remain white. So if this doesn't go blue and you're on Windows, go through and see what application you're running that's using your Continuum USB device and exit it and then come back in and you'll be able to select this. We said two things of note. Number one is if I just go right now and send, send saved analysis to EM, I can try that and do it. It's going to prepare, and now it's going to start loading the analysis. It counts up to 100 in terms of percent complete. It goes about this fast. It takes a little time. Go and do something else. Come back if you're going to be loading a lot of these. Right now, there's no other option in terms of group loading these. You have to do them one at a time. So I'm loading this up. We'll let that go through. You'll notice I have a lot of analyses that I've already created that I've stored. All these things, you'll notice they all have numbers. This one, Terry 9, is going to be loaded into analysis slot 29, etc. This will be loaded into slot 22. Keep these files handy because once you create one, you can always load it back in to your LoRa synth to load it into your Econ matrix. If a Analysis is already in that slot that you're loading to. It will be overwritten. Well, here we're almost done now. So we'll go in. The Loris synth will automatically load the default Loris cycling overlay. And in here, you can see if you select all of the analyses that I've already loaded into my continuum in this case. Some of them are still blank. Some of them haven't been loaded yet. Now, just note, you can't delete these analyses. And I would not try and copy a blank one over one that exists either. That's not intended uh, operation here. So if you fill them all out, you'll have your 40. Uh, you can't delete them. Just overwrite with some new one. You'll always have 40 in that case. Otherwise, if you haven't created all 40, you'll have some that are blank that can be used later. You can select one and then play it. Um, right now, we're more concerned with what we loaded. Here we loaded chant form one. That's going to be in my first analysis slot. Now, if I already have a file available, here I have a lot of them that, that I've created. Let's find one 
that here I have an analysis file that was just a square wave and a saw wave at a single frequency, so I really didn't need to go do a lot of channelization. I created a raw analysis for that. So if I have an analysis and I want to load it in, I can take that, and this one I know is going to load into the second slot. So I'll take that and I'll just drag that to the analysis drop option, and that will start loading it too. If you select Send Saved Analysis to EM, it will load whatever the last analysis file you created in your Loris app. If you go out of the Loris app and come back in, well then you want to drag a file that you've already created in to load it. So now I'm loading into the second slot. You'll notice the tool is still displaying the first analysis that I created. Okay, that that analysis was loaded. If I go and I select my analysis, I'll see that the square saw raw analysis I had is loaded into the second analysis slot. And my overlay comes up, and now I'm ready to use the overlays to lay my example. The next video will talk about the overlays, and you can see there's five of them that you have to choose from. There's a cycling overlay. That's the default. There's a coral overlay. You click that, coral overlay will come off. There's a one shot that's meant for basically playing once through your analysis, though so you can have some looping options. The cycling overlay is meant for cycling over and over again through your analysis. The scrub overlay kind of is a washboard like approach where you Take your finger and rub it up and down the surface. And as you rub it, you index through your analysis. The coral overlay is kind of like the cycling overlay, only it's kind of indexing the same analysis at both ends to do some special things. Then there's this MPE option that basically brings up an empty preset. And that's used when you want to just do some testing internally here. And you don't want to affect the actual overlay operation. The preset drop, save to Egan matrix, and save preset to file. These are all are related to once you modify your overlay, the overlay application here interfaces to an overlay preset. That preset is going to be stored on your instrument, and you'll save the current configuration that you have in your overlay when you get to something you like to the Egan matrix. That will store it in a user position, or you can save that to a file on your disk that you can load into your instrument with the editor later. Or you can bring one of those presets that you've pre-configured and stored and drop it back in here to continue editing it if you like. So that's basic, simple operation.